Do you know all the models of single-engine airplanes Cessna have made? Let's go through all of them today, starting with the 172. The Cessna 172 Skyhawk is the most produced airplane in history. It was introduced in 1956 and is in production to this day. It is also still widely used for flight training. The Skyhawk is the perfect trainer with strong steel landing gears for those endless smash and goes and docile handling characteristics that help student pilots not stall it on short final. The 172 has a Landomatic nose wheel landing gear and it features an all aluminum construction. In the last 60 plus years of production, the Cessna 172's outline have remained largely the same, but there have been many updates to its engine and avionics. Earlier models were powered by a Continental O300 with 145 horsepower, and recent models are powered by a Lycoming. IO360 with 180 horsepower. The Cessna 170 is the predecessor to the 172 introduced in 1948. It is pretty similar to the 172 except it has a tail wheel landing gear instead of the tricycle landing gear. And the 170's wings are still covered in fabric instead of aluminum. The 170 was also developed into the O1 Bird Dog, which was used by the military as a reconnaissance aircraft. The Bird Dog had two tandem seats and larger flaps compared to the 170. The Cessna 175 Skylark was a more powerful version of the Cessna 172, introduced in 1958. It was intended to fill the gap between the 172 and the 182. It featured a Continental GO300 engine with a reduction gearbox producing 175 horsepower, about 30 more than the 172 at the time. Although it was certified as a different type, most of the parts behind the firewall were interchangeable with the 172. The Cessna 177 Cardinal, introduced in 1968, was intended as a replacement for the 172, but it ended up being a separate model due to disagreements from the marketing department at the time. It featured a strutless wing design and a steeply raked front windshield. The engineers wanted the pilots to have a better visibility when turning, so they moved the cockpit closer to the front of the wing. Initial versions of the Cardinal turned out to be not so landomatic, and Cessna had to make several changes for it to handle similar to a 172. Cessna later introduced a retractable gear model before production ended in 1978. The Cessna 120 and 140, introduced in 1946, were the earliest models that resemble modern single-engine Cessnas. They were the tailwheel predecessors to the 150 line. The Cessna 140 was the fully optioned version of the 120, with luxuries such as flaps, radios, lights, battery, and a starter. It's probably the Cessna that I would buy. The Cessna 150 and 152, introduced in 1957, is also one of the most produced airplanes in history. It's a Toyota Corolla of the airplane world. They're cheap to operate, simple, ubiquitous, and most of the time, clapped out. Although simple, I enjoy flying the 152. It was light and maneuverable, and most importantly, cheap to rent. And the difference between the 150 and the 152 is the engine. The 152 has a Lycoming engine producing 10 more horsepower than the 150's 100 horsepower Continental engine. The Cessna 162, introduced in 2007, was meant as a continuation of the 152 line. With two seats and a high wing, it was designed for the flight training market. However, the plane was plagued with problems and controversy from the start, resulting in poor sales. Only 192 copies were sold before production stopped in 2013. The Cessna 180 Skywagon, introduced in 1953, is a more powerful version of the Cessna 170. It's a tailwheel airplane powered by a stronger 230 horsepower Continental 0470. These airplanes are the workhorses of the Canadian and Alaska wilderness, transporting passengers and cargo between remote areas. 1961 saw the introduction of the 185 Skywagon, which improved upon the design of the 180 with a stronger fuselage and a stronger Continental IO520 with 300 horsepower. Both of these airplanes can be fitted with floats or skis that allow it to land on snow fields or lakes. The Cessna 182 Skylane, introduced in 1956, is the Ford F-150 of the airplane world. It's like a Cessna 172, but with bigger, more powerful engines, roomier cabin, and better performance. The 182 is a natural step up for pilots who learned to fly on the 172, but wanted more performance and payload. Because of that, the 182 often fetches a premium on the used market compared to other planes with similar capabilities. Modern 182s are powered by a Lycoming IO540, making 230 horsepower. While Older ones are powered by a Continental O470. There are many modifications available on the market to significantly increase the power. The first time I flew a 182, I thought the controls were stuck because they were so heavy. The Cessna 188, introduced in 1966, is a crop duster developed from the Cessna 180. It uses the same engine and tail section as the 180, but it has a typical crop duster design up front. The Cessna 190 and 195 Business Liner, introduced in 1947, is my favorite Cessna. It's the epitome of classical elegance. 
The radial engine cantilever highway and tailwheel design allows one to reminisce about the good old days of general aviation, where new airplanes cost $20,000 and leaded fuel was considered healthy for you. The Cessna 210 Centurion, introduced in 1957, was essentially a 182 with strutless wings, swept tail, and retractable gear. Although later versions were completely redesigned to add a third row and two more seats, and added increasingly more powerful engines. Pressurized versions named P210 were also introduced, and they are identified by the smaller round windows. And there are also STCs to install turboprops to the airframe, turning it into a personal airliner. Since the Cessna 172 and 182 did so well, the engineer thought, why not stretch it even longer, and that's when they introduced the stationaire to the world in 1962. In production to this day, the stationaire is the Chevy suburban of the airplane world. These airplanes are also commonly used as working airplanes, hauling people and cargo around in remote areas. They are also a popular platform for skydiving operations. The Cessna 207 is almost comically long and it features 8 seats. The Cessna 208 Caravan, introduced in 1984, is the biggest single-engine airplane Cessna makes. And despite being lower on the naming scheme than the 210, it's the only airplane on the list that rolls out of the factory with a turboprop. Powered by the bulletproof Pratt & Whitney PT-6 with 675 horsepower, the Caravan is a workhorse. It's used in a variety of roles, such as cargo and passenger transport, and humanitarian relief. The Caravan sips just 48 gallons of jet A per hour at cruise, making it slightly less economical for personal use compared to to the other Cessnas. The Cessna 350 and 400 used to be the Columbia 350 and 400 before Cessna's current parent company Textron purchased Columbia aircraft from bankruptcy in 2007. They are both all composite low wing airplanes and that's a large departure from traditional single engine Cessnas. They were intended to compete with the Cirrus SR line. The 350 is the normally aspirated version and the 400 is the turbocharged version powered by a Continental TSIO 550. It was later rebranded as the TTX and production seized in 2018. The Silver Wing and the Comet were the first two airplanes Clyde Cessna built. They were both one off prototypes. The Comet set a national airspeed and distance record at the time in 1917, which is pretty impressive. The Cessna Model A first flew in 1927 and it was the first high-wing single-engine Cessna kicking off a historical line of airplanes. From my research, this was the first production Cessna model. It was a four-seater constructed from fabric covering a steel and wood frame, similar to other airplanes at the time. The Cessna CW6 was a 60 version of the Model A which first flew in 1928. It had a 220 horsepower right whirlwind radio engine. The Cessna DC6 was a scaled-down 4C version of the CW6 which was a scaled-up version of the 4C Model A. The Cessna C-34 Airmaster was first introduced in 1935. My research showed that it was the first Cessna offered with floats. It looks pretty similar to a Cessna 190. Okay, so that was every single Cessna single engine ever made. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Bye!